guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Scout Service Stories. As a scout, I do service a lot and I really do it from the heart. But having a uniform makes people feel entitled to treat you like a common worker at their service. So I have a few too many I don't work here moments. Last March, there was a vaccination campaign, and I was with five more from my scout group in line. Long story short, vaccines ran out, and we decided to set camp and wait until the next morning shots. After talking to the nurse who gave the news, we decided to uniform up, and go tell the rest of the 10 kilometers line that they weren't vaccinating anymore. I got to this van and told the lady sorry. Vaccines ran out, they're going to resume tomorrow at whatever am and she flat out get off her van, pushed me and told me that I couldn't do that to her because she had a trip to Disney and she needed to be at the airport the next day. Then, started ranting about me giving her and just her a shot, and that she would pay me for it, and just to skip the line. After she finally shut up I told her I didn't work there and I was just doing everyone a favor because otherwise she would be waiting for a shot that would never come. She then resume to scream about me not taking my job seriously and at that point I just moved on down the car line because I wasn't getting paid and I was about to cry. The next story is titled would like your fries extra crispy? This happened to my dad a few weeks ago and I have been dying to share it because this never happened to him before. My dad works for a company that helps with rebuilding after a fire or natural disaster. A few weeks ago a local restaurant caught on fire, thankfully it was after hours and no one was hurt. But there was no building left. Just a big pile of rubble. So my dad gets there a little after sunrise, he's talking with fire officials, there's caution tape everywhere. As my dad is working it's a little after 7 when this minivan just comes barling through into the parking lot. The window rolls down, and I hate using the term Karen but that is exactly what she acted. Hey, I need six sausage and egg sandwiches, three English muffins, and a really complicated coffee order that only a Starbucks barista is capable of making stat. My dad, with all the patience of a saint, goes over to her car and says. Ma'am I don't know if you can see but there was a fire here. I can see that, some of that equipment must be salvageable. Proceeds to point non-existent kitchen and melted equipment. Dad considered for a moment. So you want me, a contractor to go into that pile of rubble and make you some breakfast? Is that you are saying? Well duh. Are you stupid? Ma'am I'm beginning to think you're the stupid one. The lady tries to argue, but with his 60 years of wisdom just walked away and let one of his younger co-workers to do deal with it. Dad said he heard shouting, turned around and the lady sped off never to be heard from again. Throughout the day he did get people asking about the fire as the restaurant was a local favorite, but that was about it. In his 25 years of doing this that was his first Karen. Pretty impressive if I do say so myself. The next story is titled I get mistaken for an employee at a market. Not as dramatic as some of the others I've read about and it was resolved very quickly. I work in tourism in South Africa. And one of my duties is to buy food and supplies for our staff and business. There is one market in our town that states that they sell fresh fruit and vegetables. But they sell much more than that. They also sell everything you can need. The fruit and veg are just their specialty. They also have a food takeout counter at the back of the store. Where you can order, food like pizza, hamburgers, Russians and chips, fries. Yes we have a meal called Russians and chips. One of the nice things about this store, is that if you have to buy something in bulk, you can just ask at the cashier, pay and they will get someone to get the in-bulk product for you. They even help load your car. So I just bulked ordered maize meal for our staff, and I already paid. They are a bit busy that day so they were taking longer than usual. Which wasn't a problem, since this was my last errand for the day. So I just waited for the maize meal to arrive at the entrance to the store listening to an audiobook. Suddenly I got tapped on my shoulder and I took my headphones of to see who tapped me on my shoulder. And I saw this very angry man, AM, shoving a box of chips, fries, in my face. AM, you forgot to add salt to my chips. Me, um, sorry that happened, but I don't work here. And before he could respond, one of the owners came over and gently lead the AM to the fast food counter to get his salt. My bulk order arrived soon after. 
That was the first and only time someone mistook me for an employee to a place I didn't work at. The next story is titled Car Keeps Parking in My Driveway. Was hoping to find some help here. I live in East Cambridge near Kendall Square. I've recently been having a problem with a guy parking his car in my driveway during the weekday. It hasn't been too much of a problem as I typically park in the street, so thankfully I'm not getting blocked in when I leave for work, my girlfriend works weird hours as a nurse, so I park in the street to avoid constantly moving our cars around. I've been leaving the guy a note every time he does this, stating it's a private driveway, and he has no right to be there. This morning was a big problem when my girlfriend got called into work, and goes out to find that she's blocked in. The guy left his number on the dash, and she tried calling him to move the car. No answer. So, she ends up calling a lift to take her to work. Guy finally got back to her after she was on her way in the lift. The question I have is what can I do to get this guy's car out of my driveway if it continues happening? I'm renting the property currently to clarify. From what I've researched, Cambridge will only tow if they are on the street and blocking the driveway. Has anyone here dealt with something like this before? The next story is titled I don't know if they have baskets. Today I went to do some shopping for a birthday present for a sibling and to get some books. I got everything on my list done pretty quickly, so I chose to take my time looking through the manga and comics section of Barnes & Noble. I noticed a family was having trouble finding what they were looking for, so I popped in to help them, and moved along with my shopping. The family later came back to me with some questions, and I struck up a small conversation. I finished up helping them get what they needed, and they moved to check out. Suddenly another person walks up holding a large stack of books, and asks me whether they have baskets for people who went a little overboard. I quickly realized that in helping out the other family, I was now being mistaken for an employee. I chuckled to myself for a moment before telling her that I didn't know, and after a small pause, I mentioned, I'm also not an employee. She looked a little surprised for a second, but then laughed it off, apologized, and went off to either find a basket or check out. I guess my story is far more relaxed and happy than most of the others here, but I guess we all need a little reminder of that in this day and age. The next story is titled Squidward the Hotel Receptionist. This happened a few years ago so my memory is a bit fuzzy. I was in a hotel in Spain, sitting in a hotel internet lounge. Now, I was aware staff would use the room and table I was sitting at occasionally, but for most of the day it was free for all guests to use. I was sitting at a table using my laptop when someone approached me. Now, since I was using a computer and the table was filled with leaflets of places for tourists to go, normally I'd understand why someone might assume I was hotel staff. However, I was in holiday clothing, shorts for swimming, and a giant Squidward t-shirt that would be incredibly hard to miss. The guy asks for some information about a local attraction. Since I'm a guest with little knowledge of the area, all I could respond was, Lo siento, pero no trabajo aquí. Sorry, I don't work here. The guy then makes an annoyed huff and turns around to leave. No big Karen fight like most stories here, just a confused tourist I guess. Still, I can't imagine any hotel allowing their staff to wear a Squidward shirt when working, especially given his attitude towards work. The next story is titled a literate customer at Barnes & Noble yells at me because she doesn't know the difference between sci-fi and fantasy. This happened a few years ago when I was trying to get back into reading. High school and college kind of destroyed my love for the hobby by forcing me to read the classics. Some of them were good, a lot of them are outdated and boring, and as a person with ADHD, forcing me to read a 500-page book that I hated was agonizing. But, I've been an avid player of Dungeons & Dragons for a while, so I decided to try and rekindle the hobby by buying some fantasy books. I did some research before I went out to the store and had a short list of what I wanted to buy. Off to Barnes & Noble I went. Barnes & Noble, as I've learned, tends to lump sci-fi and fantasy together in the same section, but given I knew exactly what I was looking for, it didn't bother me much. I entered the aisle and already there was a frustrated-looking Karen with two books in her hands, looking between them. Not reading them, just staring perplexed at the covers. From a quick glance, she seemed to be about in her 70s with short gray hair, though the scowling pout on her face made her look like a petulant child. I must have seemed like I knew what I was doing. After all, I had come in already knowing what I wanted. It took about 30 seconds for me to quickly pick out the three books I wanted to try, but obviously that was not quick enough to avoid being flagged down. Excuse me, young man. 
The Karen called after me, right before I was about to step out of the aisle. So close to avoiding this interaction. I work in customer service, though, so reflexively, I turned on the smile. Yes, ma'am, can't a woman get some help over here? There's a slight pause and I'm about to tell her that I'll send an employee right over, but she continues talking. I need some help picking out a gift for my grandson. I deflate a little bit, as I don't much like interacting with strangers, but this woman hasn't done anything rude yet, so I decide to try and be nice. Well, what kind of book is he looking for? My grandson likes fantasy, she says. I take a look at the books in her hands, both of which are very clearly not fantasy as they both have spaceships on the front. For now, I keep the condescending tone out of my voice. Me. I'm sorry, but both of those are sci-fi books. Karen. Well how was I possibly supposed to know that? Me. Well, anything with a spaceship or dot any kind of technology on the cover is a dead giveaway for starters. Karen. My grandson says that sci-fi is stupid. I won't risk giving him some garbage story. You need to give me a fantasy book for my grandson. Me. Look, ma'am. I don't work here. If you want a recommendation, I can. Karen. Oh, that's bullcrap. You've been helping me already and now you're just trying to be lazy. I begin losing my patience. I deal with these types of people at my place of work, and I refuse to be nice to them outside of work. Me. Well, here's an idea for you. How about you read the back of the book? You know, the little section that says what the book is about, instead of just staring at the covers. Karen. How dare you talk back to me? It's not my job to know what the books are about, it's yours. Me. Oh yeah, must be such a strain to read five sentences. You definitely need to have people do that for you. Or hell, why not just Google popular fantasy books? You have a phone, don't you? At this point the Karen is red in the face. Karen. I'm not going to spend my time on reading this nothing genre. I only waste my time on books of substance. I just want a gift for my grandson. Me. Like I said, Google fantasy books and pick a random title if you're so averse to reading. Karen. What does averse mean? Use words that people can understand. I look at her with a raised eyebrow for a moment or two and then just turn around. Bye Karen. She grabs my arm and at this point I am very careful. I'm a 6 foot 5 man, and this is a tiny old woman, if I react to her grabbing me, even reflexively, it could be very bad. Karen. You're not going anywhere, where is your manager? I don't I begin to say, but stop as I have an idea. With as tall as I am. I can easily see over the aisles and find the corner of the store that is furthest away from the cash registers. Hiding my smirk I say. Oh, he's over in the biographies section, it's over there. I point with my free arm to the back corner of the store. Karen tugs on my arm and says you're coming with me, but given my height and weight, I just stay firmly planted and watch this small woman try to drag me away. After about a minute, she huffs, face nearly purple with rage now as she says you wait here and storms off to the back of the store. I do no such thing. Rather, I go and buy my books at the cash register. Just as the cashier is handing my bag and receipt, I hear there he is. I frown at that and turn to see that she has actually found the manager, who is looking confused. Karen. That's the employee who shoved me. Having already received my books and knowing that no one there could do anything to actually stop me, I walked out of the store as the Karen tried to convince the manager that I was just so horrible to her. One of the employees tried to follow me out of the store and said I had to stay to sort this out, to which I replied. No I don't. I got in my car and left, not ever knowing how that turned out. I was never contacted by police, nor was I banned from the store, so clearly her claim didn't stick. I still visit this store regularly today and I have never seen this woman again. The next story is titled I have what will become your food, but you don't want it. About two months ago I got a job as a commercial driver delivering various kinds and forms of meat to restaurants and shops, roughly 80% of it is chicken and goes to KFCs and Swiss chalets and comes in 50 pounds boxes, 22 kilograms for the civilized of us out there, that I move from my truck into the coolers of whichever place I'm at at the time using a dolly and sweat. At the time this story takes place, I'm in the back of my truck removing boxes from the pallet that they are loaded onto the truck as and into a neat stack for transport into the store. A KFC as it happens. When the epitome of a Karen pops her head into view, she even had the haircut, and begins yelling about something. Given that my reefer was running, a refrigerator built into the truck to keep the box of the truck at an appropriate temperature, minus 2C in this case. 
I couldn't understand what she was yelling about, it's pretty loud when it's running. Given that I was on the job at the time, I didn't go with my initial impulse and tell her to duck off and instead walked to where I could hear what she was saying and asked is there something I can help you with ma'am? Well instead of her acting like a reasonable person and responding with something resembling English she begins screeching. From what I could pick out, it was mostly nonsense and screeching with the occasional understandable phrase, she's upset about having to wait so long for her food and how there's no one at the counter and so decided to do the only obvious thing and come bother the guy in the back of a commercial vehicle throwing around boxes and not dressed in anything resembling a KFC uniform. Deciding that I had enough of this nonsense I hopped down from the back of my truck and got the manager of the store telling her that there is a customer harassing me and would she please do something about it. Being a reasonable sort, and also because she wanted me to complete my delivery and give her the chicken that her store was almost completely out of, she engaged the Karen and I went back to my truck. I don't know what went down after that, I was in the back of my truck and haven't been back there and so haven't been able to ask, but the police got involved. Karen got arrested and I got a free meal out of the bargain, the manager gave it to me. All in all, a decent day. The next story is titled just because I'm wearing a polo doesn't mean I work here. A couple months ago I went to a college visitation with other high school seniors. As part of the experience we went to a trampoline park, and I decided to wear my very comfortable polo. We get there, and I'm hanging out with my friends who also went, when someone comes up to me and asks to be led into an area that needs staff attention. I politely said sorry I don't work here, and the guy seemed embarrassed, so I told him no worries and that I thought I saw a staff member over somewhere else. I don't know what it is about a polo, but people think it means you work there. The actual staff members were in t-shirts with the brand plastered all over, so I'm not sure what made him think that me of all people worked there. No crazy Karen, just a fun story I wanted to share. The next story is titled A Brief Encounter at a Pizza Hut. This happened earlier tonight. I was heading home from work and as my family and I were all getting off late, we decided to get pizza. We live across the street from a pizza hut and so decided we could get carry out and I could grab it on my way in. For context, I work fast food and my uniform is red t-shirt, jeans, and hair pulled back with optional red hat. Tonight I was wearing a safety vest over my shirt as a precaution. After confirming with family on all the pizzas, I head in and place the order. I'm told it's gonna be 15 minutes and I sit in a chair. As I'm waiting, a guy comes in and on instinct, I glance up curiously. We can call him Martin, not real name. Martin looks at me. Order for pick up. He says to which I smile and show my shirt. Sorry. I don't work here. Just waiting. I said chuckling. Martin does a little bow. Oh. I'm so sorry. I wave it off. No worries. Another one for the subreddit. I said happily. And that was that. He got his pizza and said bye and would look for the post. So, guy in glasses and a blue shirt at Pizza Hut, howdy. Hope you have a great week. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.